I am Games. And these are opinions. One of the things that I miss about classic games is the feeling of one-to-one -one control between the player and the avatar. When I play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I love that when I press left, my character goes left. When I press up, he goes up. When I play a game like The Wind Waker, it feels more like I'm steering the character. And this has only become more pronounced in even later Zelda titles. As games have been able to get more technologically advanced and become more cinematic and more immersive, one of the things that developers have spent more time with is making movement in games more realistic. I question though if this is the right approach to immersion. On the one hand, what's happening on screen looks more like what would be happening in real life, but I as a player feel more disconnected from the action that's being taken place because I can tell that I am not directly controlling what's going on. I personally feel like this can be a bad thing at times if it's implemented in the wrong way, but when done really well, the ability of giving each direction shifts and other similar animations a little bit of weight before the transition happens can give the resulting movement more pop and actually have it feel a little bit better. I can definitely see how the shifting momentum of the character as they turn on their heel can make it feel weightier and better, but it still feels more disconnected to me. I just want to know that I am directly in control. I want that feeling of I'm performing the action, not that the character is performing the action, but I personally am doing it. I don't want anything interrupting me connecting with the character that way. This seems to be a constant back and forth that developers struggle with when doing character animation. Because on the one hand, in traditional animation where you're just animating something static that doesn't have player input, you have before animation something that they call a windup. When you have basically the character moving in the opposite direction of the direction they're actually going to do for the movement to make it look more weighty and realistic. But when you're doing video games, you don't want to have any of that wind up because the wind up again does what you're talking about and adds a little bit of wait time before the input actually registers. And it's funny though because like one of your favorite games, Dark Souls, has that in all of the attacks. Like every attack has a wind up and there's a huge disconnect between the input and the actual action. There's almost no wind up on actual movement though. When you're controlling your character spatially, you have a more direct input in more of a classical gaming style, but when you press a button, there is a level of wind up, but it's predictable. It's always exactly the same every time you use the attack. And the way you learn the game is by learning the wind ups of your attacks versus the wind up of enemy attacks and timing everything right. The game is about timing, so the timing of animations is something that you'll pay a lot of attention to, but you'll never feel that disconnect because they're careful about which animations are weighted versus which others. You can watch your character snap from facing forward to facing backward in a fraction of a second in a very gamey way that you wouldn't see in something like the Spider-Man game or an Uncharted game where your character will actually turn completely around like a human being. So would you say then that the majority of your contention with this is purely in movement mechanics and not so much in other things like combat or other movements like, like climbing a ledge or things like that? Yeah, I would say that in those instances, the level of abstraction is already so high. Like for instance, while firing a gun doesn't feel particularly abstract because you pull a trigger on your controller and then the character pulls a trigger in real life. This is why games have done such a good job of simulating gunplay because it feels like pressing a button on a controller. Swinging a sword is a lot more abstracted from pressing a button. So I've already accepted that my input is just press the button and then watch the thing happen But I do love in classic games like old-school Zelda that I can mash the button as fast as I want and the sword swing will happen Exactly as fast as I press it I would even say that I like those movement mechanics even more than something like the Souls games But obviously this limits the level of what you can do mechanically and what would look good visually in 3D. Yeah, I think as graphics have gotten better, just having a five or six frame animation loop continuously over and over again would look too ridiculous to be passable in any sense of modern presentation. And it's interesting because modern action games like the newer Devil May Cries and stuff, they have no wind up in their sword attacks. Dante, as soon as you hit the button, the swing begins and there's barely any wind up to it. And they add lots of like effects on the blade and stuff to like give it like a smear effect make it look like there's more weight than the animation itself actually has. In the Souls games, I'd say positioning is really important. 
and so there's no weight on that. Whereas in something like Devil May Cry, positioning's important, but just as important is timing your combos and stuff, so there's no weight on that either. I guess my thing is that there's games where they've added wind up and follow through on animations that look really good. Like, uh, there's this guy I just started following on Twitter who's making a 2D game, and his main character has a wind up on the jump. He's like a little blob, so the blob kind of contracts on the ground before he jumps, and then when he hits the ground, they like squishes back down before he pops back into his idle position. It's like a 16-bit style game, so most 16-bit games didn't have things like that. It was just like you immediately go into a jumping state and then immediately go back into your idle state when you're not in the air anymore. And this little extra one frame adds so much more weight to this character than something like Kirby, a similar shaped character, like a blob, but he doesn't do that in some of the games. And so it feels much more like it's just this solid sphere than like a blob that has weight and stuff. So like the added weight, I really appreciate just, I guess from an animation perspective. And as long as it's done quickly enough that it doesn't detract from that movement, I think it still can be a really effective tool. I think that as long as the game is designed around that movement, it will work. This sort of was the definition of the cinematic platformer genre. The old Prince of Persia games out of this world, everything had these huge windups on it, and the game was designed to just play more slowly and tactically, and it was more about each individual danger being extremely difficult. So it wasn't that your player was doing something really crazy, they were doing realistic motions and you just had to time it exactly right because of the fact that the windups were so extreme. And at the time, those were considered classics. Out of this world's been poured into everything, so there obviously is a market for games like this. Personally, I've never been as interested in that style of game though, just because so much of what I look for in video games is that one-to-one -one representation of the self. I much more prefer precision platformers and games where I really get that sense of, I am completely in control and everything that goes right or wrong is dependent on how well I can maneuver the joystick and press the buttons at the exact right moment. Yeah, it's interesting that you brought this up because I've been thinking about making my game and I was planning on adding a lot of these like uh, wind up and follow throughs on the animation because I'm also studying animation and they're like, that's like the 101 of what you got to do. And then you complained about how it broke the game feel. And I was thinking back on like games that I play and most of them don't have a lot of wind up because you want to keep that one to one kind of interaction to response on the screen. So I was trying to think about how I would solve it in my game so that I could still have like the best of both worlds, give it that sense of weight to the animations without sacrificing the one-to-one -one. and I think what I want to try is I want to have it be instead of like you hit the button and then the wind-up starts and then you jump for example I want to have it so like it happens quick enough so that it's there but it's not noticeable you hit the button and on the press the wind-up starts and as soon as you let go it goes into the jump that's quick enough so that as soon as you let go you're jumping but that couple frames of the push down is when the wind-up happens so in terms of like responding to the screen it's the same amount of time but you have it extra little window to put that extra animation in to give it that push to give it some more energy. I think you'd have to test this a lot to see how quickly people actually do let go of the button and whether this will change the way they interface with the mechanics to tactically hold down and release it with a sense of timing because I assume that if the character doesn't jump until you release the button that means that they'd be in sort of a crouched position by holding it down and this could be used tactically as well. Yeah I mean to expand on the mechanic like that would be interesting to see like if you hold it down do you jump higher or is there like ways to adjust the, the jump arc and things like that let us know down in the comments what type of movement and animation do you prefer would you rather have this one-to-one -one immediate feeling of i am in control even if it means sacrificing the realism or do you prefer to have some extra dynamism in your animations even if that means some actions in the game are a little bit slower tell us down below be sure to subscribe and buy a t-shirt look forward to more games content and always remember to never forget to be the games you want to see. I am Games, signing out.